Son of a bitch. Sonic and Sega All-Star Racing Transformed. Now this is easily one of the most popular games with the name Sonic attached to it that isn't riddled with glitches. And if you've played any Sonic games in the past 10 years, you'll know that's a pretty big change of pace. Oh, but that doesn't mean this game gets off the hook. No game ever does. So let's kick things off with the very first glitch, and this involves transforming, which is the game's namesake. Yeah, it's kind of fitting, really. Anytime you drive through one of these rings, the game is supposed to transform you into a certain type of vehicle, whether it be a car, or a boat, or a plane. And there's also a rule in this game that I should probably explain as it will translate into other glitches in the episode. Anytime you're headed in the wrong direction for a certain amount of time, the game will automatically put you in the right direction. Hey, and wouldn't you know it, guess what we're going to be abusing in this very first glitch. That's right, just before one of these transforming rings, what we're going to do is head in the wrong direction. As you can see, we're here in Temple Trouble, and we're heading backwards just before the transforming ring and heading towards this ramp. Our aim is to have the game automatically correct our position whilst heading backwards ever so slightly whilst on the ramp. Sounds complicated, actually very simple, and if you do this correctly, what will happen is the game will correct your position and spawn you on the other side of this transforming ring. The only problem is, this next section is built for a boat, and we are clearly a car, floating on the water, slowly and helplessly being carried off downstream. I guess this is kind of the perfect analogy for Sonic the Hedgehog right now. Now obviously this looks completely ridiculous, and it's not the only place you can do this in the game. We can do exactly the same glitch just before the very first transformation ring in Adder's Lair. All you have to do is drive in the wrong direction against this wall, and the best way to do this is press accelerate and also brake at the same time, and eventually when the game tries to respawn you on the other side of the transformation ring, what will happen is you'll still be a boat and you'll just fall through the ground as the lava down here has absolutely no collision. But that also means you'll forever be spawned on the other side of this ring as a boat and you'll be stuck in this ever-looping hell of falling, and eventually that'll just make you sad and make you question your life, so I'd restart the stage and play like a normal person? Just for another example of this glitch, we're also going to head to Dragon Canyon, and you do basically the same thing you've been doing for the other two glitches, and if you do this correctly, you'll once again be spawned as a car on the river, it makes absolutely no sense, and it looks completely ridiculous, so it's a win-win in my book. I gotta say though, the saddest thing about this glitch is it has no real practical use in the game, so I guess we better move on. And what are we moving on to, I hear you cry? Well, a glitch that's maybe even more ridiculous looking, and just as you useless. For this glitch, we most importantly need to pick up the all-star power-up at any point in the race, and then as we're about to cross the finish line to end the race, you need to activate the all-star power-up. Now the timing on this is extremely tight, it may even be frame perfect, not entirely sure, I just know it's difficult, but if you activate it at just the right time, what will happen is the animation that your character would usually do just as they end the race is interrupted, and they'll be stuck in one frame of the animation, and as beautifully demonstrated by Sonic the Hedgehog himself here, you can see that he drives off the edge of a battleship into the ocean. Goodbye, sweet hedgehog. You were just too good for this world. I gotta admit, watching Sonic plunge to his death, as the game repeatedly likes to show me, is both hilarious and very disturbing all at the same time. This next glitch is a very strange and random glitch which happens at the end of races, and as you can see, the animation for Sonic's kind of uh, celebration, I guess, is not played out, and the model actually just stays stationary while the background moves around it. It's very strange. Now what I believe is happening here is the transition for this screen is also happening while Sonic is trying to transform into a different vehicle, and the result of these two actions happening at the same time is this stationary model on the result screen. However, I'm not able to say this for sure, as I wasn't able to replicate this glitch, and I believe it may only happen on certain frames. But I'm sure you guys will agree this looks pretty ridiculous, and I really like these kind of dumb glitches. What do you say we carry on the insanity with another glitch which is just as ridiculous? There are many points in the game where if you begin a stunt the minute you land from huge airtime, you can chain a bunch of failed stunts together. And as you can see, it kind of looks like Sonic's car is just rolling around in agony, but the best part about this glitch is actually the audio side of it. Stunt, 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 
I guess you could even make a game of this. You could try and set the record for how many chain failed stunts you can get in a row. Although honestly, I think after two minutes of stunt, 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 your mind would actually melt. So maybe don't do that. Here's one of my favorite glitches in the game, which is honestly pretty entertaining, but also kind of sad at the same time. This is a glitch involving Alex Kidd, who sometimes for some reason gets completely lost on the track and just kind of spins around or stays on the spot or he just looks hopelessly lost. I actually feel really sorry for him. It's like since Sonic came along, Alex Kidd is kind of just lost. I feel like this is maybe what he's been doing for the past 30 years. Endlessly spinning around on the spot with no direction. No idea why this happens. The game just kind of gets confused and Alex Kidd, man, I just wish the best for you. Okay, let's move on to some more useful glitches as we have to remember this is a racing game and if racing games have taught me anything, there's always a glitchy way to win. And this next glitch in Shibuya Downtown demonstrates that perfectly. At this point in the race, if you do a hard left off the side of the track and then stunt, you can actually cross the finish line way before the game intends you to. This will help you beat and improve your times, and honestly it's so easy I'm surprised nobody at Sega picked this up. This won't however cut out any of the track, you will have to do the final loop at the end of the race, but hey, you got a better time so it's all good I guess? A similar glitch can be done in Burning Depths, although the setup is very different. For this one, at the very start of the race, you want to turn around and drive towards this ledge and before you hit it, press start and then restart the race. Now all you have to do is one normal full lap around this course and then on the next way around, what you need to do is when you reach this point here is turn and then head backwards. Continue to drive the wrong way and as explained earlier, the game will now automatically put you where it thinks is the correct spot. However, because of the small setup we did right at the beginning of this race, what will happen now is the game will place you just before the finish line. And as you drive over the finish line, you'll now be counted a full lap, and this means you'll have significantly reduced your time around the entire course. It's a pretty crazy glitch, and it has a lot to do with the way the game tracks you throughout the course. Turning around at the very beginning of the course and then heading here sets up a flag that makes the game think you've already been around the course once. I guess they never thought that anybody would go backwards around the course and try this, and unfortunately, they did. Next, we're gonna head to Ocean View, and probably one of my favorite out of bounds in the entire game. Game. Although this one is admittedly kind of tricky. First of all, you have to make it to lap 3 where you find these giant stepping stones that lower you into the water for a huge water section of the course. And when you reach this part, what we're going to do is turn around and wait for these stepping stones to rise upwards. And once that's happened, we then need to go in the wrong direction headed towards these stepping stones. Now this is the tricky bit. Once you hit this wall, you now need to hope that the game respawns you on top of these stepping stones, and then you need to use stunts to kind of roll your way out of this, I guess, and that really is the tricky part because that's where the game tries to kind of push you back into the normal boundary area and well sometimes you'll fail this it's going to take you multiple attempts probably however if you're successful with this as you can see here you're now able to kind of explore this entire ocean area it's really cool actually now the usual things to expect when you're out of bounds in a video game is most of the things that you see aren't actually solid so you can go straight through them something else i noticed was the ocean kind of goes on for ages uh, or seemingly so anyway. One of the things I love about going out of bounds in games is you really get to see how developers actually built this area. The other thing I love is the fact that you're basically not supposed to be there and it's kind of like breaking the rules. All in all, this out of bounds in Ocean View isn't really that useful, but if you can get out of bounds, it's well worth the exploration. Not to mention the fact that driving around in a speedboat in this quite frankly gorgeous area out of bounds is really quite relaxing. Okay, let's move on to a more useful out of bounds glitch in Carrier Zone. Now this one, like the one in Ocean View, is kind of tricky as well, but the setup isn't half as bad, I guess. Just after you transform into a plane, what you want to do is turn around and head to this bottom part of the first carrier that you're on. You basically want to approach it low and then come up and rest against the side and then begin stunting to the left. And if you kind of hold down, eventually, hopefully, you'll kind of breach the collision and end up out of bounds and able to fly around. Again, this will most likely take you a couple of goes to get, but it's pretty easy once you know how. So now we're out of bounds in Carrier Zone, and once again, most of the ships out here aren't actually solid the further out you go. And one of the things I decided I would try to do is see how far
far this ocean actually goes? And the answer to that question is pretty dang far. But eventually it does just kind of end, and I did try to fly under it, but the game was like, nope. But one of the other things that I did was fly up really, really high, and I got this amazing view of the entire carrier's own course, and I gotta admit, it's pretty cool. But of course, this Out of Bounds is way more useful than the one in Ocean View, and here's why. When you first get Out of Bounds, what you can do is fly up a little higher than the course expects, and then kind of just loop around halfway through the course, which will trigger a flag in the course telling the game that you've actually gone around the course properly. When we really know, basically we skipped most of the course and then ended up in first place. And to add insult to injury, oh hey look I got myself a trophy too. To continue the race and enter lap 2, we basically just U-turn on the first carrier and then fly over the finish line and hey what do you know we're in lap 2. And then it's just a case of rinse and repeat for the remaining laps and you'll have finished the race with crazy amazing times. And as an added side effect, because we skipped the transformation into a car back on the first carrier, we actually crossed the finish line as a plane, and, well, this looks stupid. Oh hey, another trophy. This next Out of Bounds takes place in Dragon Canyon, and honestly, it's a really finicky, but sometimes very simple glitch. I'll explain. There's this section of the course with a palace with some rock formations just leading up to it. If you fly around this kind of hole in the rocks and then perform a vertical stunt, what will happen is sometimes you'll be able to just clip through this part of the ground, but honestly, it is really, really tricky, and I don't understand the rules. Sometimes it lets you in, sometimes you just kind of fly around the hole hoping for the best. Oh hey, look, an achievement. If you're somehow successful in clipping through the ground using one of these stunts, then suddenly you'll be out of bounds. Once again, we can get some amazing views of this entire course by flying up really, really high, and we can even loosely follow the course around. And as you'd expect, most of the things out of bounds aren't actually solid, like this giant spaceship. I'm assuming it's a spaceship. I don't remember much about Panzer Dragoon, so uh, it's a spaceship. I gotta say, this is a really beautiful course to fly around out of bounds, but just make sure you don't do what I did and fly the wrong way for too long, as the game has a habit of putting you back in bounds, and honestly, you don't want to be doing all this again. We have yet more out of bounds shenanigans in Adder's Lair, and this one is pretty simple actually. For this out of bounds glitch, what you'll need is the plane, and then you want to fly to this section of the course. You'll find this waterfall of lava, and down here are some rocks that, once again, wouldn't you believe it, you can stunt against these rocks and basically just fly out of bounds. I gotta say this is probably one of the most easy out of bounds in the whole game. And what's cool about this is once you're done kind of exploring the course as the game doesn't really intend you to, you're also able to just follow the course and there is a lap skip glitch in this course. Although, I gotta be honest, I don't really understand how this lap skip actually works. I was able to get it sometimes and not other times, so it's, it's there if you guys want to figure it out, but I kind of didn't. I was kind of just happy to fly around where I shouldn't be flying. We have so many out of bounds glitches in this game, it's unreal. This next out of bounds glitch is in Dream Valley, which is personally one of my favorite courses as it's Nights into Dreams. When do we ever hear about Nights into Dreams? So for this one, what we want to do is once we enter the first portal that takes us to where Gilwing hangs out, and then turn around as we exit this kind of cave-like area, and then fly it against the roof of where the cave kind of meets some collision. And then you guessed it, we basically just perform a stunt against this this collision and roll right out of it. One of the greatest things about the Out of Bounds in this game is that most of them take place while you're flying a plane, so you have great freedom of movement. And one of the great things about Dream Valley is the game kind of makes you think that it's not all one course or it's taking you somewhere magical or whatever, but basically this is all taking place on one map. And I'm pretty sure there's a cool lap skip glitch in here somewhere, but by this point I was actually more interested in exploring. And you guys all know one of the things I love to do is try and see how far Out of Bounds I can get, and with this one, I got pretty far. So I flew in a straight line for about 20 minutes and flew right outside the skybox and got this amazing view, and well, it was kind of worth it. I was really interested to see just how far out of bounds I could fly, but honestly, I got kind of bored looking at this just blue space. So in the end, I just kind of gave up. The idea of flying where nobody had ever flown before, well, the appeal just kind of wore off. What do you say we wrap this episode up with one final out of bounds glitch that is very, very useful? This takes place in the race of ages and it's really really simple to pull off. All you have to do is at the very start of the race turn around and drive through this wall which seems solid but hey guess what it's not. The key thing now is to drive the wrong way but not drive too fast as what we want the game to do is warp us to where it thinks we should be which is actually incorrect. If we drive towards the left side of this track the game will try to reposition us and put us under the track 
and out of bounds. It's that simple. And because there's no ground under us, naturally we begin falling, and good for us, this track is actually very vertical, so we can use that to our advantage. We now need to fall downwards through the track, triggering flags as we go, which actually falls the lap count. As you can see, we're now suddenly in first place, and we've done basically nothing. As we continue to fall, what will happen is we'll actually pass the very first part of this course, and this is where we'll actually fall through some kind of kill plane, which will actually reset our position, which is still under the track, so we remain falling. And then when we fall through this part once again, that's when the lap actually triggers, as there's a flag there that says, yep, you must have actually gone through this lap once, so that's one lap triggered. You then just basically repeat this process until you finish the race, which also means you'll be falling when you finish the race, which produces a very interesting result screen. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is how you skip an entire race by just falling through it. Honestly, Sonic and All Stars Racing Transformed is a really underrated kart racer, and it's also got some really quirky and hilarious glitches, plus some amazing out of bounds that you should all check out if you get the chance. But that about wraps up this episode with some amazing glitches you guys can try out in Sonic and All Stars Racing Transformed. If you guys are on Twitter, why not follow me at ASTARTSHOW. I post news and updates on everything son of a glitch, also stuff about low poly. It's easily my most active social media outlet, and honestly it's a great way for you guys to see when I upload so you don't miss any episodes. Cause we all know how messed up that YouTube subscription box is, don't we now? So go find me on Twitter now, at ASTARTSHOW, and get following. And if you enjoyed this episode, why not check out the rest of the playlist of son of a glitch, there's tons of glitchy fun to be had. And a huge thanks to everybody you can see on screen right now, these are my Patreon Patreon supporters. I love you guys, you really have been very supportive over the last couple of years and I really appreciate you. If you're interested in supporting this channel's Patreon, you can support for as little as $1 a month, or if not, I still love you. Thanks guys, see you in the next episode.